scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Kingdom advance. What is kingdom advance? It is the, the, the use of every, the deploying of every and any scriptural mechanism to see that Christ is enthroned first in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities. I made up my mind as a man of God that I will never raise a people who are only spiritual. I believe in influence. I have seen the power of influence in transforming society. Is God blessing us? You know what honor it is to have the secretary to the federal government for instance sitting and listening to the word of the Lord, his convictions are influenced by the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And that is safety and a blessing and an advantage for the nation. Do you know that God must find space in the places and the corridors of power for the value system of the kingdom to remain? It is an honor. It is not something to be ashamed and afraid of. Are we blessed? Influence means to have the, the, an effect, the capacity to have an effect on the mindset, the beliefs, and the convictions of a person. Let me just rush very quickly. I want to touch on what I call pillars of dominion. And now this is where every man here should, should just, just lend me your attention for a few minutes, if I may request. Because having established the fact that we have a mandate and that our mandate is twofold. Number one is evangelism, the use of the gospel to see that men are saved. But number two, to take advantage of the dominion systems that have been allocated to the saints. To see that creation and every territory where we are domiciled, that, that we become extensions of the value systems of the kingdom. And it is not just by doing Christian activities. The value system of the kingdom has nothing to do with being a Christian. It is a value system that reflects the character of Christ. Remember, God is not the God of Christians. He's the God of all flesh. I hope you understand what I'm saying. There is a dimension of God whose applicability is to everyone alive. With no bias, with no prejudice. He sends the rain to believers and unbelievers alike. And there must be a dimension of the influence of the kingdom that will extend to our territories that everyone will know that there is a God in heaven regardless of your spiritual convictions. But there are pillars. Please, please understand what I'm saying now. There are pillars. Dominion does not just happen by intention please believers understand god is a god of systems that means in his character he does not do the same thing twice when god operates he shows you a model of what he intends then he builds a system around that activity so that engaging the system brings continuity to that process are we together he made man once he made a woman once and programmed within those species a system that if engaged will produce continuity that means for instance if a woman is barren it is satan attempting to stop a system that has been built 
So when you pray and her womb is open, it's more than a miracle. It is God replying creation that I am still God. I'm supervising the system that I built. Are we together now? Respectfully speaking, Africa is a very spiritual continent, but we are also a superstitious continent. There are dimensions of the power, the grace, and the influence of the kingdom that will not come through superstition and wishing. We will have to understand the systemic character of God and sustain the grace to engage the principles that make for those results. Otherwise, we will continue to profess truths we cannot defend. For instance, there is a spiritual system that is responsible for growth. You don't just grow um, by default. You may do so biologically, but every other aspect of growth must be engaged intellectually and so on and so forth. There is a spiritual system that governs sustainability. People don't just last. There are principles that make it happen. Are we together now? There is a spiritual system that governs restoration. I call them systems of advantage. God in his building man knew that man would have times where he would lag in time. And he built a system that can be engaged that man can restore time. Finances for instance. I think this is probably one of the most superstitious areas in Africa. Respectfully speaking, we have this illusion that somehow, somewhere, there will be some kind of... And, and don't get me wrong, God is, is the source of all blessings and it is true. But the, the refusal to understand the whole counsel of God is what continues to betray our profession for many years. And so people do not rise to that level of economic stature that gives them a voice in society. God is talking to men. We cannot talk to men and not talk about these issues. Are we together? Because the Bible says that any man that cannot take care of his family, paraphrasing, has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. And my goodness, there are so many people, especially at times like this. We've acknowledged the fact that the pandemic and other related issues have caused the economies of nations to come to their knees. But this now is the time to show the superiority of the value system that we hold on to. That there is an advantage in our dealing with God that is able to help us route a system. This is what will compel the Gentiles to come to our light. The Bible says in Isaiah 60 and verse 1, it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Amplified. Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, Rise to a new light. It says, For the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And then the Bible says, For darkness shall cover the earth. Is the word tohuwa bohu, confusion and gross darkness the people then it says but upon you the glory of god shall arise verse 3 says gentiles hallelujah gentiles that the men in family um worship center will will rise to a level of dexterity that gentiles will begin to come and say we have discerned god in this church there there is something about the men of excellence the anchor men an anchor is built to withstand the pressure it can stand it says gentiles will come to your light but it never said their kings will come to your light because the kings also have light the kings only come to the brightness your miracles will attract multitudes but it's your wisdom that will attract kings Kings to the brightness. Remember, this was adumbrated in the life of Solomon. The Bible lets us know that other kings came to pay homage and to bow to him. But there was a strange woman from Utopia who would not pay attention. She was a woman who had results by herself. And nothing about Solomon's wealth and influence touched her. But consistency is a proof that you are living by principles. You cannot remain by mistake. Nobody wins the Olympic by mistake. You can start by mistake. You can have short-term results. But consistency, kings don't come when you start. They keep watching. When you remain and are sustained, it's proof that you have gained mastery. So when the influence of Solomon was sustained, Sheba now came. 
and she came with gold and everything and went through and, and saw the dexterity of his palace and the order and everything that was there and her conclusion was that half of this was not told me. There is a message that will not be attractive to kings because kings by default are arrogant people. They have a history of their pain and their sacrifice. They will not listen to nonsense. It will take a dimension of the kingdom that dumbfounds their wisdom and dumbfounds their experiences. Hmm. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. He was not asking a miracle. He says, Rabbi, forget the nonsense we say in the day. We know you are a man sent from God. There is something about your understanding of the kingdom. You will not see Nicodemus in a crusade ground. No. He came to Jesus by night. It's time for certain people to start coming by night. To call you and say, look, forget what we do. This is just a ritual of leadership. But I know what I'm looking for. I have discerned the grace and the wisdom of God. That the opening of your lips is a revelation of a counsel that can bring to an end decades of confusion in people's lives. Please hear me. There are things when you have only poor people look for you. There are things when you have only wealthy people look for you. There are things when you have only your tribesmen look for you. But there are things when you possess all men will seek for you. It's a short one. We'll soon pray. Are we together? So I want to show you a few pillars. We'll start tonight and then conclude tomorrow as we just allow all the other speakers to just move by the Spirit. There are pillars. It is my desire and it was my prayer to hold the hands of our mother and the matriarch of God alongside the chairman of the Anchors Men Fellowship to be able to help strengthen the hands of the men in this church through knowledge because we rise up by revelation. It takes more than intention. The Bible says, Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2, he told me, stand up and Ezekiel did not have the strength to stand. Even though he wanted to stand, but he says, the spirit entered me. Ezekiel 2 and verse 2, and set me upon my feet. You don't rise because you are tired of sitting. You rise because your light has come. The things that I'm going to be sharing with you in the next two or three minutes, if you allow me, will just start... Listen to me, I submit to you with all humility. They are not opinions. These are truths that are backed up by the integrity of God. They've been vetted through the lives of exceptional people. By the grace of God, we do not share cunningly devised fables. These are principles that have made kings. The Bible says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. It says, with me is riches, wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. There is a species of men God is producing in this conference. Psalm 112 says, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, verse 1, that delighted greatly in his commands. Verse 2 says, his seed shall be mighty, Psalm 112. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. He says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Then he says wealth and riches shall be in his house. And yet his righteousness endures forever. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? It takes light. When spiritual illumination comes to you and you understand the systemic character of God, then you know that there are dimensions of his power that were vested in his principles. Listen, please. There is a dimension of God's power that is invested in encounters. When you encounter God as a reward for meeting him, there is a dimension of his power and his anointing that comes to you. But there is a dimension of God's power that is invested in principles. You don't have to be a Christian to access that dimension. You just have to be enlightened enough to understand the systems. And this is the system by which we dominate the cosmos. So he said it this way, to be wise as serpents is one of the few times God will use the serpent to tell believers what do you have to do with the serpent but he says if you are living in the cosmos there is something about the serpent that will become a weapon for you was it not Goliath's own weapon that David used don't forget 
David used his sling to hit Goliath, but he used Goliath's own sword to remove his head. There is something you have that is in the hand of the world. It will take the wisdom of God to know how to collect it. When David went for war, he did not need to carry a sword because he already saw Goliath with one. And he knew that there is a way you can collect things. Are you ready? Please pray in one minute. Open my eyes, oh God. Open my eyes. I give you a guarantee in the name of Jesus Christ that no one who possesses this light will be small. I will multiply them, they will not be few. I will glorify them, he said. They will not be small. Hallelujah. These are spiritual pillars that activate the systemic dimension of God's power. That every man and extends to everybody who engages these principles. I give you a guarantee backed up by the jealousy of God that you will watch yourself rise. You will veto whatever background, veto whatever limitation and rise to a point where the nations will be compelled. This is not the first time a nation or territories are desiring to call the name of the Lord through the leaders. It happened in the days of Daniel. Africa will call upon the name of the Lord. And it will not just happen by crusades alone there will be a dimension of the supply of God's grace there will be an extension of influence hmm. number one the first pillar that I would share thank you so much for the time is our spiritual connection the first pillar that controls dominion is your spiritual connection please write it down life is spiritual I think we have to start from there and just deal with it be honest enough life is spiritual ladies and gentlemen i respect profoundly all of the years of intellectual labor and all of the years of of stretching our understanding intellectually from border to border i took out time to lavishly acknowledge the value of being intellectually sound but living in today's world approaching life only from a standpoint of science and sociology is only a recipe for fatality life is spiritual there is a dimension of life that cannot be explained by science there is a dimension of life that sociology cannot capture are we together life is spiritual the bible does not hide the fact that life is spiritual first samuel please let's run through these scriptures just five minutes so that we can wrap up we'll continue in the morning first samuel chapter 12 from verse 6 please read it as a prophecy for your own life just the a part ready please read one to read and samuel said unto the people uh-huh it is the lord that advanced moses and aaron and that brought your fathers up out of the land of egypt there are things only god can do it is the lord that advanced moses he moved though but in the realm of the spirit there was a force pushing him forward he did not just move forward by intention we live in a society that sometimes try to downplay the value of god no in the beginning god it must remain our formula not in the middle of your experience god must be alpha omega in the beginning of your business god in the beginning of your family god in the beginning of your career god when you begin to be embarrassed about the existence of god and your connection to him you are authorizing darkness daniel lost every other thing but this one thing the gods, the spirits of the Medes and the Persians continue to manipulate a system to frustrate the conviction of Daniel. And he said, no, I can lose every other thing, but not this. And they sat in a parliament and passed a decree to just frustrate one man's prayer life. And Daniel said, no way. 
if I get into the pit, it's still the God that is I'm praying to that will save me. So I, I would rather stay there. Your spiritual conviction. Your spiritual conviction. Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 28 to 31. Please just write it down. We're not reading it. The Bible talks about the young men getting weary. It talks about people fainting. It is not backsliding. It is the reality of carrying a human body that no matter how energetic and how visionary you are, the vicissitudes of life will beat you to a point where one day you will get to a point where you will have to stop and catch your breath. It has nothing to do with backsliding. It proves you are a man and it proves you are alive. For as long as you are on this earth, you just need to live a little longer, a, a one more hour, one more day, one more second, and you will find a need to say, ah, God, I will need your help. God designed it that way to make sure we don't forget him. He knows that there is a tendency in us. So he allowed that limitation to force man to always need him. Your spiritual connection. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. Please just give us that one. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 26. The Bible says with men, this is impossible. Uncle men, with men, by October till December, it may not be possible to make anything out of your finances or out of your life. But when you add God to any equation, the calculation changes. Anything plus God is the answer he gives. With God, it is possible that in one week, God can program a climate of favor over a man and wipe the shame that came from January till September. There is a God in heaven. Please hear me. God is not an experiment. The monarch of the universe. Regardless the noise that is made by the pride of men from nation to nation, we submit that there is a God in heaven. Are we together? So your spiritual connection is the first pillar that ensures your dominion. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Paul was mentoring the church in Ephesus. And then he began to tell them that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Paul is, Paul is saving you years of shadow boxing. He's saying any physical thing you see happening, don't approach it just physically first. That there is always a spirit supporting it. It was James speaking to the church in chapter 2. Don't turn there, just write. And verse 26, he was teaching on faith and works. And he veered off to say, for as a body without a spirit is dead. So every body you see has a spirit. Do you know trouble is a body? There is a spirit behind it. An unfavorable situation is a body. There is a spirit behind it. When Jesus calmed the storm, there was the wind and there was the wave. You could only see the wave, but there was a wind energizing it. Life is spiritual. There are forces that continue to fraternize with human entities across the globe. To see to it that the saints in light are victimized. To see to it that families are subjugated. There are horns that continue to speak. Zechariah saw them, what seest thou? And he said, four horns. He said, these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Jerusalem, against Israel, so that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. Please believe it, there are horns. Africa, hear me, there are horns. The devil will not cross his leg and watch your influence rise. He knows what will happen. He has already seen your worship in the secret place. He saw you rolling before God in the secret place and saying, God, as you rise me, your, as you lift me, your name is also lifted. He, he, it was not only God that had the worship. It was not only God that had the confession. Satan had it too. And vowed a vow that as far as this family is concerned, I will see to it that this one who is becoming a rising star will come down. Ah, but there is a God in heaven. That when God gets up and shakes himself and say, I am ready to lift you. There is no power in existence. No fraternity of men. I tell you this. History is full of men and women who were shocked when they saw the finger of God writing. Listen, God does not seem to move every time. But every once and again through history, he will say, men, shift. Let me show you once and again 
so that you will teach your children that God is still alive and I believe that soon we are getting to a point where God is about to make a statement in this country in Africa he's about to make a loud statement I am God hallelujah your spiritual connection the whole world lies in wickedness you send your child to school and you do not know what happens you just know he returns in the afternoon or in the evening you do not know the onslaught of hell that is waiting for him like like the fowler waiting to catch the bird your conviction you can get a gate man for your house but he cannot stop demons you will need the ministry of angels for that one you can do your best to be as visionary and responsible as you can but we are just limited Gaskiani, we are men there are things that your strength cannot go beyond and at that point you must tap into a fountain of grace the songwriter says when my heart is overwhelmed he says lead me to a rock that is higher not a rock that looks like me God is speaking to someone here maybe you are an anchor man just hearing me and saying apostle you may not understand the bills that are on my head I'm barely hearing you now because my landlord is waiting for me I'm barely hearing you now because there is a things did not work out listen continue to put your business plans and everything in place but give space for a mysterious manifestation of God continue to prepare for your career continue to give the best but please in all your arrangement give space for God because there is a God in heaven and your spiritual connection is not a religious reality it's an advantage that is provable here and now spiritual connection is provable sociologically is provable economically is provable all wise the psalmist said many are they that rise up against me psalm 3 he says many are they that say where is thy help he says but thou O lord you are a shield for me he called him my glory and the lifter up of my head I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people, he said. He said, I lay me down and I slept. I wait for the Lord sustained me. Men, let us not be embarrassed. What we are facing now is greater than our strength. Whether it is the pandemic, whether it is the financial situation, whether it's stability in our organizations, we have done our best. We have stretched our intellect from border to border. The world is having to check their data again. The world is having to research again. For instance, work is going on tirelessly across the nation to try to get a vaccine. And several things are happening across the earth. We need God and we must acknowledge it fast. The jealousy of God does not allow him to come without being called. He will only prompt you. But he will need you to call. The Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Not them that want him. He says, call upon me and I will answer. And I thank God that we have people who are calling upon the Lord even in Nigeria. I trust that the grace of God will come. And in the name of Jesus, soon enough, we will we will rise above the pandemic rise above the situations that are coming here and we thank God for the presence of our father here so that while we are speaking he's representing the government of our nation and we are declaring in the name of Jesus that there is a mystery to this country it's not all about human beings there is the jealousy of Elohim backing us and that in the name that is above all names when the devil is just about to destroy families just about to destroy careers then his majesty speaks and says i'm also part of the equation and my presence makes the difference if you're with me say amen, amen. are you ready to pray the second pillar and then we'll take it from there tomorrow the second pillar that commands dominion is the power of transformation the mystery 
of superior belief systems. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, I beseech you, brethren, from verse 1, by the mercies of God, he says, that you offer your bodies a living sacrifice unto God, holy and acceptable, and he calls it your reasonable act of worship. Then verse 2, he says, and do not be conformed to this world. The word world is the Greek word aeon, the thinking pattern that comes with this age. There is an ideology, listen please, there is a belief system that comes with this age. There is a way sociology has shaped us. Our mindsets, we have come from different backgrounds and these backgrounds have, have sponsored certain belief systems that no matter how well-meaning we are, they sustain the ability to impede our rising and that if we want to command dominion, we must sustain both the humility and the fortitude to receive superior knowledge. Superior knowledge. Superior knowledge. Your belief system is the only gateway that both the Holy Spirit and demons use to access your life. Belief systems are powerful. They shape your understanding about life, about God, about finances, about family. Let me give the last illustration and then I'm done. Gentlemen, please can you come? Just stand here, you stand here. Watch this. Look at this, my friend here. You come. Let's assume for instance that this guy, just an example, God forbid. Imagine that this guy is an arm robber and imagine that this guy is a pastor. Are we together? You call him an arm robber because he's robbing people and you call him a pastor because you think he's helping people. Both of them, if they become corpses on the ground, you don't call this an arm robber corpse. You call it a corpse. You don't call this a pastor corpse. You call it a corpse. So who was really the arm robber? The mindset. Who was really the pastor? The mindset. Not the bodies. The bodies were slaves executing the mindsets. Listen to me. Regardless of territory, regardless of background, you will never rise to a globe to become a global reference just having a great idea. I dare you to contend for superior knowledge. Superior knowledge and information, we're going to deal with that tomorrow. You must be willing to break out of the limitations. Many of us have been held down by the shackles of culture, unhealthy dimensions of culture, unhealthy dimensions of our past, unhealthy dimensions of our sociology, even spiritually speaking. When God wants to help you, he does not take you where you want to go. He takes your belief system there. He travels he, he, right where you are. He will journey with your mind to see the possibilities. And when that happens, then there is no limit to what you can do. You must find a way of indoctrinating yourself that your life is a reflection of your belief systems. Our finances, the health of our, our families, they are merely report cards. They are telling us what is going on in our belief systems. For instance, respectfully so, when a man slaps his wife, the hand is innocent. The hand only obeyed what the mind is saying. The, it is the mind that slapped the wife, not the hand. Because the same hand can hold her and strengthen the union. The hand is an executor of the mindset. If finances go down, the finance is a report card. Is showing that there might be something in our understanding that needs to be adjusted. You see, we must be meek enough. This is the hardest part of the Christian man's experience. It's not giving your life to Jesus Christ. It's the humility to allow tra transformation will sting our ego. Transformation will rattle our belief system. Sometimes what we call the core convictions will even have to come under fire. But happy is the man that submits himself to superior belief system this church the anchor men the results you have celebrated so far is not just is the grace of God yes but I submit to you that the grace of God came upon minds that were enlightened mind that were intellectually sound mind that were flexible to embrace a global perspective this is the result that we celebrate today and if we must rise further than where we are then we must sustain the flexibility to receive more because there is more our experience today is only a report card of our mindset of yesterday 
Tomorrow will show what we are conforming to today. Are you ready to pray? Thank you. Please rise up on your feet. Let's wrap up for Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.